Hey everybody, section 9-6. All right, we're going to be working with dilations. Everything we've done up to this point, the first five units of the chapter have been all involved uh, congruence or, or congruence uh, transformations. Transformations that were rigid, transformations that maintained all sizes and differences, distances, and we're about to change that on you. These last couple sections are going to be looking at translation transformations that change side lengths. All right? So, what are dilations, and how can we understand them using rules and graphs? And we'll get into the vocab as we get into this. All right. So, let's head it into it. Up till now, as I said, we've been working with rigid motions. Okay? Ones that maintain distances. All right? Now, how about transformations that involve similar figures instead of congruent ones? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick a point. And let's just call, let's just pick a random point out here. This is point C. All right, now I'm going to take every distance. So the distance between C and E. <clears throat> and what if I doubled it? And then took the distance between C and D. Right? <clears throat> and doubled it. And did the same for CF and CG. And then took those final points and connected the dots, all right, um, <clears throat> so let's make a figure here out of the endpoints, and look what we get. We're going to get a figure that is in all ways similar to our original figure, DEFG. And so, therefore, we can go ahead and <clears throat> we know that this must be E prime. That's at the, dis the end between uh, the end of the line that we created by doubling CE. Here's D prime, F prime, and G prime. Now, look what's happened. Not only did we double every length from C to every point and went beyond it, okay? Look what else has happened. Every distance in and of itself here, like FG, is doubled in F prime, G prime. DF is doubled in D prime, F prime, okay? So, uh, let me uh, set all annotations, okay? So that's how a, a, a dilation works, okay? A dilation, we're going to pick a point, and we're going to use a scale factor uh, and change the length of all of the uh, uh, distances from that point and just keep going on a straight line past that point. So the green line formed here, that's what happens if we uh, uh, double every length. Uh, again, not only did we change the distance between C and every uh, point on the pre-image by doubling it, but every point on the original, every distance on the original pre-image is doubled on the corresponding side of the, of the final image. How about, what if we tripled it? So I've got triple size, length, uh, triple size lengths there. Connect the dots. There's E prime, D prime. F prime and G prime. Once again, similar figure, only this one, every side length is tripled compared to the original image. Notice, angles don't change, all right? But every side length here has been tripled. Same thing's going to happen when we quadruple every side, okay? Show you again, just so you see it. E prime, D prime. F prime, G prime, every dimension on the original figure is quadrupled now. Angles have not changed. Okay, just because since we're going, how about if we cut everything in half? C prime, or E prime, D prime, F prime, and G prime. All right, so we can almost also make everything smaller if we multiply the distance from C to every point by one half. All right. This is what we call, oh, sorry, one more. We're going to multiply by one half, but now I've got C, uh, C inside the, the figure. And look what happens. 
every distance is halved and we create again a similar figure where every unit on the green figure is one half of the length on the blue figure. Angles have not changed, but distances are cut in half. This is a dilation, all right? Our center of dilation was what we called C, all right? And our scale factor was whatever we multiplied everything by, two, three, four, half, okay? So now just know that the scale factor, which we can call N, has to be greater than zero, and we write it using a rule that looks like this, D for dilation, N for scale factor, C for uh, this, the, the point that represents the center of dilation, okay? The properties of a dilation is that the image of C is itself, okay, or C prime equals C, okay? For any other point, all right, for any other point like X here, all right, well, X prime must be on the ray, okay, sorry, on the ray, missed the little typo there, it must be on CX, and CX also must be the scale factor times that distance from C to X, okay? So we take CX, we multiply it by N, by our scale factor, <clears throat> and we find the distance CX prime all right, and another way of writing it is the scale factor is CX prime divided by CX. Basically, fancy way of saying what we were doing all along. I'm going to take CX and multiply it by something, keep going in a straight line, and that's where I'm going to put X prime. Okay, okay. Third property we now talk about, <clears throat> we need to talk about, is that every angle measure is maintained. There is no difference between the angles and the corresponding figures. Okay. Okay, so those three properties relate to dilations. Okay, if a dilation has a scale factor where n is bigger than 1, it gets larger. It's called an enlargement. This is an example of a dilation with a scale factor of 2 around point C. So here's point C. We again double every side length or double the distance between CG and get CG prime. We doubled CE to get CE prime, and so on and so on. That's called an enlargement. So if this side is 8, I know my new figure has to be 2 times 8 for 16, 12, 24, etc. Good enough? Okay, if our scale factor is between 0 and 1, remember we said before it had to be bigger than 0, but if it's less than 1, it's called a reduction. In this case, I'm looking at a scale factor where we're using one half. Again, center of dilation is point C, and JKL becomes J prime, K prime, L prime. Every distance now from the original is cut in half. Make sense? Dilations include enlargements and reductions. So, a couple things. This is how we're going to look at problems like this. What is the scale factor now from triangle XRT to XR prime T prime? Okay, be a little careful with this. The only reason I included this was so that you see. Notice that XT is 5, but XT prime is 15. Therefore, our scale factor, even though it looks like we want to put a, a, a 2 there, our scale factor is actually 3. Okay, and we can write the rule. This is a dilation by a factor of 3 around point X, that's our center, and it gives me X, uh, uh, our prime, T prime. Okay. Next problem. What is the scale factor from D, E, F, G, now that's the bigger blue one, to D prime, E prime, F prime, G prime, the little or green one, and write a rule. Stop it if you want. Here comes your answer. Of course, this one we're going to have to do by actually counting the sides or using the distance formula, something like that. But I'm going to check it out. I noticed that DE itself is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units long, where D prime E prime is 1, 2, 3. We have cut everything in half. Okay, so that's written this way. Now, I need you to notice something critically important. For any center of dilation, okay, the scale factor on any point, if we put it on a coordinate grid, we can just multiply the, the uh, coordinates of any point 
by that scale factor and find the new value, the new the, the value of the final image. Okay, does that make sense? Let me show you how it works real fast. So here our scale factor is one half. And for example, I take this point, which is what, four, four. When I multiply both of those by one half, I get two, two. Bam, there it is, E prime. F is at eight, uh, negative two. When I multiply those both by one half, I get four, negative one, and that's sure enough where F prime is. That makes sense? So negative four, negative two becomes negative two, negative one. And finally, D is at negative two, four. We multiply both those by half and we get negative one, two. So we can take any coordinate pair for any point. If we've got a dilate, dilute, dilation happening around the origin, okay, we can multiply it by the scale factor and we get our new points. Doesn't have to be fractions, could also be enlargements but definitely has to be around the origin. Okay, uh, so find the image of D 2.5, triangle ABC, pause it, here comes your answer. I am just gonna use that rule that I said before and we, we will find out that negative two, one, multiply both of those by 2.5, and I get negative 5, 2.5 for point A prime. See what I did? I just took negative 2, multiplied it by 2.5, and I got negative 5. Took 1, multiplied it by 2.5, I got negative 2.5. That's where I put A prime. Okay, do the same thing with uh, C. That'll end up at uh, 10, negative 5. After I multiply, I... Uh, um, 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 four, uh, negative two by 2.5 each. B, negative one, negative three becomes negative 2.5, negative 7.5. Okay. And there is our new figure. Okay. Now, I want you to notice something really important also on this figure. Notice that since the origin was on the, uh, since our point, our, our center of dilation, the origin was on our triangle, okay, it did not move. All right, just something kind of important to notice. That point right there is on both figures. It doesn't change. All right, uh, so final kind of problem, the image on your screen is 20.4 centimeters. You change the zoom on your screen to 25%. This means the screen is going to reduce by a factor of one-fourth. What's the size of the new image? Well, if the original is 20.4, our new image is one-fourth of that, 5.1 centimeters. Make sense? Hope it's all good. I will see you later.